Hey there. Still Huntress here, and um, just try and ignore the background behind me. We are still doing renovations. This time it's the front door. And uh, the reason I'm sitting here is because it's basically the best light. And I'm using my crappy phone. Yay, crappy phone. So uh, this is uh, my VR to the full disclosure tag. And um, pardon me for looking down, but I did write down the 10 questions. So uh, let's get started. The first one is, what do you... Hmm, what do you do that makes you feel silly, that sort of thing, like a, as part of your practice? Um, I have to admit I, I'm a solitary practitioner and I've never done anything in front of anyone, so um, I've never done anything that made me feel silly. But if I could imagine um, someone watching me do my, my worship, uh, I can only imagine that anyone I would permit to watch me doing my worship, I will have already primed and told them the context for everything. So I don't think I'd do anything that would really make make me feel silly. So, um, but, uh, yeah, if I was suddenly required to do my ritual in front of a bunch of strangers for some bizarre reason, um, I guess my entire ritual would make me feel silly. Because I don't really think that mainstream North America has much of a place for extreme ritual. And I am quite elaborate in my rituals. Uh, do, 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 do. Are you a witch if you don't cast spells? I do not use the word witch as a synonym for pagan or Wiccan. Uh, to me, a witch is an activity. Um, it's like being a member of the church choir. Not everyone in the church is part of the choir. And not everyone who's in a choir belongs to a church. Some people enjoy the singing and they enjoy um, the structure. Um, and that's an activity they want to do, but they're not particularly religious, so they join a, a municipal choir or something like that. Um, and other people go to church just to worship, and they have no need to to be a member of that particular activity. So if you are a pagan simply to worship the gods and to offer your fealty to them um, and to offer your uh, devotions to them, uh, the activity of manipulating the physical world through spell casting has nothing to do with that. So, um, can you be a witch if you don't cast spells? Well, I consider the word witch to mean one who casts spells. So, no, that's what witch means. Can you be a pagan? Can you be a a, um, a Wiccan or a, a heathen or what not? without casting spells? Well, of course. Um, so, yeah, it's just an activity to me. But then it depends on what you're using the word witch for. Um, there's been a big movement lately to reclaim the word witch. Unfortunately, we all didn't compare notes about what we were reclaiming it for. So some of us use it as a synonym for pagan, some of us use it as a um, uh, like I do, to mean someone exclusively who casts spells, and that has nothing to do with whether or not they're pagan. I'm sure some people use it as a word for a consomme or an umbrella. None of us really compared notes before we started reclaiming it, and now we are sort of in a pickle. Um, number three is sort of a rehashing of number two, so I'll just leave it at that. Number four, um... Something that you've done that you were ashamed about. I don't really believe in shame to a great degree. Um, there are certainly things we've all done that we regret. Um, I don't think that I've ever really done anything as a pagan that I'm ashamed about. Um, there are things that I regret. I've always been a very cautious pagan. Um, because I've always been solitary... And everything that I know, I learned from books. Uh, I've never been um, 
able to sit down with another pagan one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I've always been a little bit hesitant about mucking about with switches and when I know very well I'm not sure what I'm going to turn on. And as a result I've, if anything, stunted my own forward progress. So that's something that in a lot of ways I regret, but um, I don't think playing it safe is something that I'm really ever I've ever been ashamed of. Uh, have I ever been disingenuous about Wicca or, or paganism or my beliefs? Uh, definitely when I was younger. I think when we're young, we often define ourselves by what we aren't. And we often um, use words intentionally to shock or intentionally to, to assert ourselves. So I think I, I bandied about the pentacle and and all of that a little bit too flamboyantly in the beginning and perhaps painted what I was doing as more dramatic than it really was because I was young and that's what you do. You're trying to define yourself. And then later I sort of went in the other direction and because it was very, very important to me that people understand that pagans are not the boogeyman. Um, I did sort of lean the other way and emphasize the threefold law and um, all of that sort of stuff, which is, truth be told, not something that I believe in. I don't really believe in the threefold law. The most sense the threefold law ever uh, made to me, the idea that everything you do comes back to you threefold, the idea that everything you do will come back to you on the physical plane, the spiritual plane, and the the plane of the unconscious. So it comes back to you once, but on all three levels, so it's a real shebang. I can kind of get that. But um, I basically govern my morality on the metaphysical plane and on, in the ethers the same way I do for, on the physical plane. And um, if you're trying to attack me, I'm going to fucking kick your ass. And why would I behave any differently with a different set of tools? Which is what um, utilizing the manipulation of the ethers through spellcasting is, is. It's extending your scope uh, beyond the physical realm, but it's just using, using a different set of tools to do the same thing. So I don't have a special set of more namby-pamby rules for that. I just use the same common sense I would um, in the physical world. Um, and I have been disingenuous in the past about um, misrepresenting Wicca as harmless, really pushing the fluffy bunny thing later in life in an effort to, ha to, to not scare the people around me. And um, eh, we all swing one way too much and the other way too much in, in our in our path, I think. Uh, we're walking a, a fine line for most of us in this society um, between wanting just, just to be left alone to do our own thing and everybody else just go away and um, really needing our neighbors not to be afraid of us. So, uh, yeah, a couple of times disingenuous. Uh, where do your metaphysics and your craft um, mix? Well, Metaphysics is the study of what is what is the nature of the universe, and to me that's what faith is for. So faith is metaphysics, and metaphysics is faith. And to me, it's kind of like saying, where do fruit and bananas meet, and where do they diverge? Well, they don't diverge, but bananas are a fruit. Um, to me, that's what faith is. I suppose, uh, for a lot of people, um, it's not about that. Especially if you're an atheist pagan or an agnostic pagan, it's, um, you're viewing it more, uh, as a, like a Tibetan Buddhist thing, where it's, um, a lifestyle that is giving your life a structure that is psychologically constructive and is going to make you a better person, but as to the why of the universe is not really relevant. 
to me, that's what spirituality is all about. So the two are inextricable. And by craft, I'm talking about my faith as a pagan, not the activity of witchcraft. Uh, deity, real or symbolism? Um, I spent most of my life thinking of deity as merely symbols. That's how I spent most of my existence as a pagan. Not actually believing there were beings on some other plane that got angry or happy or wore pants or had coffees or had sex with one another. Um... That's recently been shifting, not, I'll admit, because I've had any kind of personal encounter with any metaphysical being, unfortunately, but because so many other pagans that I've come to respect have had such experiences. And you know what? I've never seen the Mona Lisa. But enough sources that I respect assure me that the Mona Lisa does exist. So I have come to the conclusion the Mona Lisa is real. So, um, enough pagans that I deeply respect uh, have assured me and the rest of those who will listen um, have, have asserted that they have encountered these beings as actual beings, sentient and, and living in their own right on the astral plane, and so I've decided to accept them as the Mona Lisa, as being real, and... Um, so, yeah, it works both ways. I, I was perfectly happy pagan for for decades, regarding them as archetypes. Uh, sh 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 do you really believe that um, you can be some other faith and still be a witch? I really, truly believe it's none of my effing business. It's none of my fucking business, and it's nobody else's fucking business. If Joe Schmo says they're a worshipper of the flying spaghetti monster, and they're a witch. It's none of my fucking business to say they are or they're not. I don't have to justify it. They don't have to justify it to me. I, they're not answerable to me. If so-and-so says they are a, a devout Christian and a witch, none of my fucking business. They do not have to answer to me. And it's not up to me to define their faith for them. If somebody says they're a Muslim and they're a witch, none of my fucking business. You may be getting sort of a theme here. I really resent other people even approaching this question. It's none of our fucking business. Um, if they have appropriated a name that you don't think they have a right to, that's unfortunate. We all, um, we all have to deal with the evolution of language, and we all have to deal with labels. And if that's what they say they are, and that's the label that they use themselves, well then that's the label, that's the label that we're all going to have to use to, to, um, refer to them. That's, it's not up to me to tell somebody who is in a polygamous relationship, it's not up to me to decide whether or not you can actually love two people equally. Um, they say they do, and it's not my fucking business. It's not up to me to say whether or not you can really be gay. Um, there are people who say they're attracted to the same gender, so it's not my fucking business. Um, so, yeah. I really don't understand us as pagans really thinking we have any place even discussing the matter. They don't ask us if we can really be raised in a particular religion and then suddenly be pagan. Um, we don't have to justify that. We don't have to answer to them, and they don't have to answer to us. So, okay. Uh, do do do. Have you ever been unsure or scared of a spell? Of course I have, and anybody who hasn't is a stupid moron. Um, spell work is powerful, and spell work really actually does shit. And um, if the light switch is wired to something other than what you think it is, 
That's what you're turning on, whether you mean to or not. All of this stuff about, um, well, it's your intention that's important. No, it's not. It's not. Um, the physical world has laws of gravity, laws of uh, relativity. Um, whether you intend something to fall to the ground or not, gravity doesn't care what you intended. Gravity is working on everything all the time. Um, the laws of the ethers are like the laws of physics. They work the way they work. And whether you intended your spell to go this way or that way isn't really relevant. If you flip this switch and push that button, what you intended is really not relevant. That you've initiated what you've initiated. And if you are not well enough educated in what the hell you're doing, you could really muck things up. And let's hope not for other people, but sometimes that's what happens. So somebody who's never been unsure or even scared of spell work is a stupid moron. Um, too high, have you ever set to a higher standard for yourself? Uh, yeah. Um, but that's my personality. And um, that's something that I always have to work on. And to a great degree, I think... A little bit introspective here, but this is full disclosure tag, right? Um, I'm trying to pull no punches. Um, I think I do hold myself to a very, very high standard in a lot of things as a way of making sure I'm not successful. I think it's something that many of us do. We set ourselves up to fail. So we can say, see? See? You can't do it. So... Don't worry about it. Just don't even bother continuing. And I'm trying to um, be more realistic in my expectations and push myself forward. Hmm? Hmm. Lo not really lower my expectations, but make them more realistic and then push forward. Because I think I, in the past, have used very, very high standards as an excuse to um, not do shit. So that was as full disclosure as I can get. I was trying to really, really be brutally honest. So, uh, thanks for the VR. I'm looking forward to comments below. And um, talk to you soon. Blessed be.